I would say I've come a long way in my fitness journey. I went from being that skinny kid who just wanted to put on a little bit of muscle to being a great big bodybuilder wannabe trying to pack on as much size as I possibly can. But it hasn't always been a straight road. I've suffered a lot of failures and made a lot of mistakes, but I learned something from all of them. So here are the seven things that I would tell my younger self to skyrocket my progress. Pop quiz. Which of these three exercises are going to be the best for building the front delt muscle? We've got standing overhead press, a seated dumbbell press, and a machine shoulder press. If you said standing overhead press, you would be wrong. And you may have been listening to a certain YouTuber who likes to spread a lot of misinformation about hypertrophy. I'm not going to name and shame them here, but their name rhymes with Kathleen Sex. The correct order for quality of pure hypertrophy goes machine shoulder press, dumbbell shoulder press, standing overhead press. And this is because stability is king. You don't want your balance, other muscles, or your core to deprive you of reps that you could get using just your shoulders. I'm not saying you can't do the other exercises, they'll still work wonders, but if you want to maximize hypertrophy, you want to be specific and stable. We've all done it. Oh no, my knee hurts, I can't train legs. Oh no, I've got football in three days, I can't train legs. Oh no, I clipped my toenails too short, I can't train legs. Until eventually you just end up being on a push-pull, push-pull split. I had my excuses, I was a sponsored scooter rider at the time, my logic was, no, oh, scootering will take care of it, my legs will get massive. They won't. Trust me, even if you think you don't care now, you will come to regret skipping legs. Maybe not today, maybe not in a week, but three years from now when someone asks you your max squat and you have to say it's 100 kilos and you're built like Johnny Bravo, you're gonna feel silly. Look, sometimes we're blind. To people that we admire, we'll take anything they say as gospel. I ended up falling into that trap. I had a favorite bodybuilder and I would just trust everything that he said. Unfortunately for me, a lot of that was bad advice, misinformation, and it led to me purchasing a lot of products that did nothing for me. All I'm saying is don't take someone's anecdotal evidence, accept it as truth, and then implement that everywhere. Make sure the information you get is backed up and actually true. For example, BCAAs, they were a massive thing a few years ago, everyone was getting them. I purchased quite a lot of them, but it turned out if you actually looked at the literature, they're useless. I would assume that a fair amount of you are still living at home and therefore that your parents will cook you your meals. This might make it seem that learning culinary skills is kind of pointless at this time. I thought the same thing until I moved to uni and then couldn't cook anything. But even before that, if I wasn't restricted to what my parents were having, I would have been able to make much more calorically dense and high protein meals than my parents were having that would have been able to really accelerate my progress. Knowing just a few recipes that you enjoy and have great macros will do you a world of good, I promise. There is a difference between ego lifting and pushing yourself that a lot of people seem to get mixed up. What I really mean by don't ego lift is form first. Doing bicep curls with more weight than you can handle is going to make you use less biceps for the movement and therefore elicit less growth. So in almost all cases, nail the form first before you get your ego involved to start throwing plates on. We all love loading up a bar and feeling the smash of a full weight stack, but you're limiting your own growth by taking form for granted. I went through a phase where I stopped logging my numbers for about a year. Now this is fine for the casual gym goer, you just warm up with a bit of weight, you put some more on until you feel about a working set weight. But if you want to maximize the muscle you can build, you want to know what you did last session for a few reasons. Firstly, it gives you that goal so you know how many reps you have to get so that you can progressively overload that exercise doing more reps or weight than the previous week. Two, you don't have to fiddle around trying to find the right weight. This can waste time and energy, potentially making your top set worse. And finally, it's nice to be able to look back and say, hey, I was benching 10 kg less a month ago. Logging is without a doubt one of the best tools you can use to push yourself. And finally, patience in a few facets. Patience during rest times is important because you should both actually be resting and not cutting that rest time short. Ideally between sets, you wanna rest as much as you need. I personally take three minutes, 
but I used to take one minute because I was tricked into thinking that a one minute rest time was somehow better for hypertrophy. This is just wrong. You need to have as much energy as possible for that set so you can take the muscles to true failure so that they experience mechanical tension so they can grow. And patience is also very important in macro cycles. In the past, I was very impatient on a bulk. I had a huge caloric surplus and I ended up getting fat. To get the best out of gaining and cutting phases, you need to be patient. Small calorie increases or decreases so you don't end up putting on excess body fat or losing excess muscle. So there we go. If you enjoyed, I would love if you would drop a like or if you comment, I'll give you a big wet kiss. Subscribe if you want to see more videos, training plans and the posing guide are linked down below. I'll see you in the next one.